Good morning and welcome to Fifth Third Arena on a very special day here at the University of Cincinnati. It is also a very special day roughly 15 miles away in Alexandria, Kentucky, the birthplace of a new member of the Bearcat family that we are excited to introduce to all of you today. A quick note on our format today. After the news conference here in the media room, you will have the opportunity to do one-on-one -on -one interviews on the arena floor. We also remind you to please put your cell phones on vibrate, even if the ringtone is the Bearcat fight song. As you may know, the University of Cincinnati is celebrating its 200th anniversary this year. But the bicentennial celebration is not just about honoring our past. UC President Dr. Neville Pinto, who is with us this morning, also says it is time to embark in a new direction and focus on what's next. And that is precisely what we are doing today with the UC men's basketball program. A little more than five years ago, we had an event like this to introduce a new athletic director. Since then, he has spearheaded the $87 million renovation of Fifth Third Arena and hired outstanding coaches like Luke Fickle in football, Michelle Clark Hurd in women's basketball, Scott Guggins in baseball, and others. And we have no doubt that he has done it again. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the Director of Athletics here at UC, Mike Bone. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, for being here today. Thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you very much for being here today and uh, appreciate everyone in the room coming. And uh, I just really want to take a, a couple minutes before I introduce uh, our new coach and uh, help everybody understand what we were looking for in our next coach. We were looking for a leader who can help us build upon our class of the league initiative and identify a bear cat that really comes from the same cloth as a Luke Fickle, Michelle Clark Hurd, and Scott Guggins, who are just several of our game-changing hires recently. And we wanted somebody that had the ability to bring that kind of impact to UC and putting that together. But the athletic director doesn't do these type of searches alone. And I think it's important for me to take time and ensure that everybody understands the role different people had. And these gentlemen on the left, not all of them are with us today, but our existing team were incredible. We asked them to stick together. We asked them to be patient. We asked them to provide us impact and provide us different uh, aspects associated with what was important to them in building a profile. And let me tell you, every single time I was with them, it was inspiring to be with them. And I don't know if they'll ever win another game. I believe they will. But I don't know if they ever win another game. These young men deserve the highest level of praise, admiration, and respect. And they're going to get it from me, I can tell you that. And I just want people to know how awesome they were. And to have a president and the president's staff engage with us and helping us, I really want to thank uh, Luke Fickle for batting a 1,000 in home visits, uh, having a leader and a partner that can uh, come into a home with a, a vision and a, and a presence. Uh, is really special and so uh, I'm deeply indebted to Luke Fickle and his leadership and his ability to help us. Uh, I really want to thank Brandon Sosna and Nick Bowes and the athletic department staff in helping us put that together. Our legal counsel team was phenomenal, doing a great job. Our other coaches and coaches across the country, athletic directors, basketball minds, uh, coach played for Billy Donovan. The ability to talk to someone like that at length was, was really, really special. And uh, former players, to hear from them, and I'm so disappointed I couldn't touch base with all of them. I really am. And uh, I really wish I could do that. But I am looking forward to working with our former players on opportunities to engage with them along with our new coach and, and putting together our new trajectory of where we're going. As far as what John uh, Brandon represents, impressive basketball acumen. Impressive basketball, basketball acumen. His innovative recruiting prowess and, and ability as a proven recruiter. He's a champion of skill development. Our players are going to really, really love that. He's detail-oriented. He brings fundamental traits uh, that our existing identity has of toughness, tenacity, accountability, 
coupled with an exciting brand of basketball. We like that. That is really something that we were looking for. He has a strong analytical approach to basketball and leadership and the development of young men. Yes, Dr. Pinto, next does live here. And it lives in the form of our innovative leader and high integrity basketball coach who will have a major impact on UC. Dr. Pinto, please join me at, to the stage to welcome our new basketball coach at the University of Cincinnati, John Brannon. Microphone's a little low here for me. Um, I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I'm energized. Uh, but before I get into the typical press conference thank yous, I do want to make an acknowledgement. Uh, so yesterday, just before 3 o'clock, it kind of got released that uh, I was going to be your next head basketball coach. So I want to make a public apology to Tiger Woods. Uh, <laughs> stealing his thunder a little bit. Uh, but... Uh, I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't thank Northern Kentucky University for giving me the opportunity to start my coaching career. Ken Budoff, Jeffrey Mearns was the president, now is, uh, president of Adia. Um, it's an emotional time when you leave a team. Uh, coaches will tell you that. Our young men here went through that uh, just a week or so ago, and we had tremendous success. And I'm forever indebted to Northern Kentucky University for an opportunity to, uh, to be their basketball coach and put me in position to you know, continue the career and be where I'm at today. Certainly thank to Mike Bone, President Neville Pinto, for your faith in me to take over this historic university and this historic, excuse me, this historic program. Um, their leadership is visionary. They're dynamic leaders. And you should be very happy that they're in those positions because I was blown away by, uh, by who they are as men and uh, their vision for this program and where we're taking it. I'd also like to thank the board that are here today. It's a special time. It's the bicentennial of the University of Cincinnati. Uh, the 18th uh, oldest institution in the country. So it's certainly, uh, I uh, want to recognize that and appreciate all those who are here. Uh, you don't get to be the head coach of the University of Cincinnati without mentors along the way. Uh, guys like Jason G for me, uh, Billy Donovan, as Coach talked about, a guy I talk to regularly and run things by. Um, Anthony Grant, who's up the road to Dayton. I work with him at the University of Alabama and VCU where we won many, many championships. Travis Ford is another uh, great that I got a chance to work under when we were at Eastern Kentucky. I want to thank my staff at Northern Kentucky and all the coaches that have helped me along the way uh, to certainly get to this point. I'm going to get to my family here in a second, but the most important people in the room next to them is those men right there. Uh, and I want to acknowledge them right now because I know what they've gone through over the course of the last week. Uh, the success that they've achieved is, uh, has been unprecedented. And I, we acknowledge that when we got a chance to meet yesterday and we talked through some things. Uh, I'm going to get into some more detail as we go, but you guys being here humbles me, and uh, I'm certainly excited to get a chance to get to work. Uh, this is fun for everybody else, but I'm, I'm looking forward to, to spending some time with you guys. Uh, my family. The Brannons are a big part of uh, the Cincinnati community. Okay, I didn't think this room would be big enough when, uh, when I was told this is where we were having it. Uh, but I want, I want to acknowledge my family. First and foremost, my beautiful wife, Lisa, uh, my rock, and... Um, We've gone through a lot together and uh, look forward to taking on this challenge. Uh, promised myself I wouldn't get emotional, so it's working out right now. <laughs> my daughter, Caitlin, my daughter, Jaylee, the twins. <laughs> so we were, obviously, I was in this building last year. If, uh, if you guys heard some loud pitch screaming right in the middle of free throws, uh, it would be them. They'll do the same thing when the opponents try to shoot free throws in fifth third. My advice to you is not to sit anywhere near them. Um, <laughs> they, they, they get after it. Uh, my brother who's here, Grant Brandon, who's the best coach in our family, he took the Walton Verona Bearcats to, uh, to the uh, lead eight of the Kentucky State Tournament this past year, an outstanding coach, even better dad, and his wife, Anna. Uh, my dad, John Brandon, who is, uh, dad, you always told me that the cream rises to the top. And uh, St. Bernard, born and bred, uh, worked for the Kroger Company, 
coming up, Cincinnati through and through, and uh, certainly not here without all the lessons you taught me. So thank you. My mom, Debbie, from Newport, Kentucky originally, and uh, she, uh, she talked about how much better she looks in red. So <laughs> I'd also like to thank my in-laws, Jim and Jerry Ellswick, for being here and being a part of this process. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law as well, Tracy and Brian Short. So thank you for all my families. I got some uncles and different people as well here. So I just really wanted to acknowledge them. Um, so I've got some interesting memories here in Fifth Third. Um, some memorable, not so memorable. I used to come over here back in the day and play pickup ball against some of the greats. And I'm not going to be able to name all the greats because there's just too many. But I'll never, I'll never forget there was one pickup game we were playing. And uh, the late great Pat Cummings, a mountain of a man, all right, went to get a rebound. And Kenyon Martin, I've never seen it before, jumps over top Pat and slams it, jumps over top of him and dunks the ball. And I was in complete awe at that point. And I uh, very, very surprised I was even in the same company as those guys. Fast forward that about 15 years. On December 2nd, 2012, Dan made a great call on this. And, and unfortunately, I've heard it too many times. Uh, Cashmere with the dribble left fadeaway jumper against the University of Alabama. You guys remember that shot? Over the hands of Musa Gay, the seven foot two guy who I, as an assistant, told coach to put in the game. <laughs> bad, bad move. I was on the other side of that. Um, and then obviously this year, getting a chance to play against, uh, play against this great UC team and uh, being on the other side. So I'm looking forward to the other side of uh, victories here as we go forward. Um, I mentioned you being humbled to become your head coach. Two national titles, six Final Fours, eight Elite Eights, 31 All-Americans, 57 NBA draft picks, and counting. That'll humble any coach. Tremendous success they've had here. The former players of UC, my message to you is, it's your program. You built it. It's yours. And regardless of the different eras, it doesn't matter. You're welcome back here anytime. Just be prepared that when you do come to practice, you'll have to speak with the team afterwards. Uh, but certainly want you to be a part of your home. Uh, don't need to call ahead. Just show up anytime you want. The offices are available as well. I want to acknowledge Coach Cronin and his success. I'd say Mick's a friend. I've known him for quite a few years. Uh, you know, to have 89 wins in three years and nine straight NCAA tournaments and the success he's had here is uh, big basketball shoes to fill, or big, sh big shoes to fill. And I would joke with him, that's figuratively big shoes. <laughs> um, so, uh, but he, he's outstanding and, and, and I'm very appreciative of the culture that he's built with these young men. So everybody wants to know about style of play, right? Our style of play uh, will invigorate the fan base and capture your hearts. Uh, it'll be wrapped around 94 feet both ways. We'll get after and we'll press full court. We'll attack offensively in transition. Doesn't mean we'll take quick shots. We'll take the first available good shot. Defensively, we want to we wear you out and go deep in the shot clock, which is a tradition defensively of Cincinnati basketball. It wins games. We'll have a toughness about them, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we will push the basketball and play fast offensively. And uh, I look forward, you know, a, a, com, a term we're going to use, guys, in our program, chance favors the aggressor. Chance favors the aggressor, and that's what we'll do. We'll be an aggressive basketball team. Um, to the recruits out there in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and beyond, we're coming. We're coming. To our fans, make no mistake about it. I grew up in this area, all right? To the fans of the University of Cincinnati, this is Cincinnati's team. This is Cincinnati's team, and I've learned that. The other thing I know about our great fans is they know the game of basketball. And I look forward for them to sharing it to our opponents and not necessarily sharing it to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, the last thing I want to share with you, the players that are here. What you're going to find out through them and watching them, what will permeate the hallways of Fifth Third Arena will be their trust in each other. We define trust as believing and investing without knowing the outcome. Right now, that trust is probably tested. They don't know what the outcome is going to be. All right, We've got to build that over time. That won't be built in one day. We had great meetings yesterday. We'll get to work tomorrow on the court. The second thing is toughness, mental and physical. Physical toughness has its limits. Mental toughness is unlimited. This basketball program has been branded in toughness since the day I grew up and the times in St. Bernard that I grew up with my dad's family. That will not go away. That will continue forward. The secret sauce is the sacrifice. Good teams become great teams when members trust each other enough to forsake the me for the we. It's a Phil Jackson quote and something we'll talk about greatly. 
Our goal is to build upon the transition. Our goal is to continue Final Fours, national championships. That's the understanding, and that's what we will push forward to each and every day. We will divorce ourselves from outcomes and live in the process. We'll do it together. It'll be fun. It'll be competitive, and it'll be a group of young men that you will be honored to call Cincinnati's team. Go Bearcats. All right, at this time we are going to open it up for questions. We'll move this microphone over to John and Mike so you're free to ask questions of either of them. We also have a wireless microphone, so raise your hand if you have a question. We'll get the microphone to you. You can introduce yourself and then ask your question of John or Mike. All the press conferences are like this, right? Hey, John, Brian said WWT. Uh, first, congrats. Second off, growing up in this area, seeing this program throughout the years, how emotional of a day is this for you with your whole family here, the team supporting you? I mean, you've seen this program <laughs> over decades. To get this job, this has to be a dream come true for you. It very much is, and I didn't mention that in the press conference. This is a dream job for me. It is a dream come true. I tell you, Mike is, is aggressive. You know, we uh, signed everything yesterday evening. I met with the team, and he looks at me because you got 10 a.m. press conference. So I was like, okay. So we made a lot of phone calls. Didn't sleep much last night. Bob Mangine got a text at 4 a.m. this morning. I uh, look forward to getting a chance to spend some time with him. I've known him since I was 12 years old. Uh, very much a dream job. Very excited to get started. And uh, what you're going to get is tremendous energy. And uh, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not, I'm not the, uh, the greatest in everything. But they're going to get tremendous work, and the guys will feel that. All right, nobody will outwork us. Nobody. Bill Cook, GoBearCats.com. Mike, can you talk about the process? You know, you know did you, how, how early did you target John? I think that the process is, is obviously very, very important. And uh, with the events of the last numerous years, we also obviously recognize uh, the competitive nature of the national landscape associated with coaches. And so we have obviously watched John and been fortunate enough to be able to see his work firsthand. So obviously John was uh, a clear a leader on our list that we wanted to look at, but uh, we scrubbed uh, the entire nation. And that's why I believe we had four nights in a row until uh, 1 a.m. working with our command post and, and our different initiatives and being able to work on time zones associated with the West Coast late at night. And uh, again, ensuring that we really had the opportunity to look at every potential option for us and ensure them that they were a fit for the University of Cincinnati, a fit in character, a fit in leadership, a fit in energy. Uh, we have tremendous momentum at this institution, tremendous, unprecedented. And so there was immense pressure to match that. And uh, I believe we, we, we found that. And it, it's real similar to a search that I did at another institution at one time. And people say, oh, it's just a local guy. And yeah, he is a local leader and a guy with incredible talent. And so he emerged every single time. It's like, well, that guy doesn't trump John. That guy doesn't trump John. This model doesn't trump John. No one ever trumped John Brannon. And I think that was what was so impressive. And, and uh, yeah, we felt an obligation to not only the institution, but our incredible fan base, our players. I've mentioned them numerous times, John has as well, that we nail that. And uh, the process was exhaustive, it was thorough, it was fundamentally sound, and, and I'm very, very proud of, of how it ended up. And I'm thrilled uh, to represent the president, the president, and all the people I mentioned that really helped us with that. Absolutely, absolutely, and I haven't had a chance to meet. I had an opportunity to meet Lisa and the twins, but I haven't had a chop opportunity to meet his dad and his brother and and what they stand for. Huge asset, absolutely, 
I think that uh, our past has, has obviously served us well there. I think that when you think of of uh, Coach Guggins and you think of Coach Fickle and their equity and Coach Clark Hurd, for that matter, uh, at being a former assistant here, that connection to the community and to names and to people is is critical for us. And uh, it's a it's a our president was here 26 years before he came back to lead us. I think those connections are a critical piece of our fabric that helps identify who we are and what we're about. And uh, again, that was a, a tremendous piece. Chad Brendel, Bearcat Journal, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> can you just talk about this conference and, and what that challenge means to you? Uh, great coaches and, and the conference is really on an upswing and, and now you get to take that challenge. Yeah, tremendous, you know, Chad, it's, it's a, I mean, it goes without saying, really, the, the competitability of the conference, the amount of teams that are making the NCAA tournament, the teams that have invested and continue to grow in the conference. Um, you know, tr you know any time you walk into a conference, the coaches and the consistency and, and the level that they bring from a recruiting standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, those are the challenges that I wanted. And to get an opportunity to do that with one of the best home court advantages in the country, I mean, what, 49-3, I believe, in the last three years, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll prepare for that each and every day. And uh, I look forward to competing against those guys come January. Joe Daneman with Fox 19. Hey, Coach, uh, congratulations. And I'm curious when you make a transition like this, and it can, I'm sure, feel overwhelming with everything you have to get done, what do you prioritize in the first few days after you get the job to make sure that this thing is going the trajectory you want? First 90 days are extremely important. You want early wins. The prioritization is these guys right here, uh, the current players. I tell, I'll tell our players now, and I told them last night, and I'll tell them each and every year that I'm here, we will win with the men in this room. The recruits that we add are going to be outstanding, all right? But our success will be determined by the men in the room. So what I did is I spent all last night speaking with them and their families, and they're reaching out to some different people on the phone constantly. Um, the quicker you let me out of here, I'll be able to do the same. And, uh, you know, we got to get started. You know, uh, Dr. Pinto put it great. I was meeting at his house the other day, and he asked me the question, how will you marry, you know, what we've done in terms of style playing different things with your philosophy to get moving quickly? And my comment to him was, we need to get started. And uh, we're going to get on the court tomorrow and just do that. John, how did you feel when you found out that UC was going to share your home court a couple of years ago? Was oh, good. <laughs> this, this is your opportunity to find out how transparent I am. Um, not excited. Um, we had just come off an NCAA tournament. I felt like we had a tremendous brand building. And, you know, our young I didn't want our young men, to be quite honest, to, for the – for the Cincinnati brand to come into Northern Kentucky at the time, because I was excited. But Mike and Mick made it seamless. Uh, we ended up winning a regular season title that year. Nothing got in the way. Uh, Brandon Sosna didn't like me very much prior to getting to know me, because there were some things that I didn't want to go into the gym at the time. Seamless. The professionalism and the, 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 the way they kept their award in every instance, to be quite honest, was uh, blew my mind. I, I had no idea, because I really thought it was going to be a distraction. And it wasn't at all. It wasn't anything. The only thing was, this was a good piece. So when you're pulling out of BB&T Arena, because there were so many Ohio license plates, they were turning left. That was the most annoying thing. <laughs> but I lived in Alexandria, so I turned right. <laughs> John, what's the philosophy on building a staff here and yeah. adjusting that, you know, for this for this level of basketball? No question. It's a great question. So. We'll build a staff that will be, in my mind, the best in the league to be able to support these young men and to support what I want to do in terms of our core values and the way we run our program. With certainly an understanding of what I want and what I need, all right, and as well as projecting forward in terms of our needs on the court and recruiting. And uh, Mike will find this out, and I'm sure he knows it already. I'm not rash in any decisions. I'm very deliberate in all the decisions. You know, regardless of staff, the way we built the Northern Kentucky program was in many of the no's that we did yeses. You know, uh, it won't be quick decisions, we'll make the right decisions, and it'll always go back to what's right for our student athletes. Any additional questions? Hey John, I know you touched on 
playing style. And I remember when you took the job at NKU, you talked about 94 feet both ways as being your philosophy of playing basketball. I wanted to follow up on that and ask you, can you explain what that means, what that philosophy is, and how you told your team about it and how you want them to execute that style? Yeah, Joe. So for me, obviously, any great coach is going to have to adjust to the personnel. But our system will be one in which I don't like to give up any part of the court. Like I, I don't, we don't want to just let the ball be brought up at the pace that the other team wants to be brought up at. We want to make them uncomfortable. We want them to make a play instead of run a play. You know, it, it's chance favors the aggressor. So we're going to pick up full court. We're going to push the ball quickly. Now, it ties into taking great shots. You know, the few stats that are most important in basketball, from a defensive standpoint, defensive rebounding. From an offensive standpoint, effective field goal percentage and assist to turnover ratio. We'll live in those statistical things. So as we build our style of play, we're going to have to understand and we're going to get to work tomorrow on exactly that. All right? That is a fun style of play to do. But it's work. And it's hard. And it's easy to talk about and hard to execute. And uh, that's, why, that's why I told our president we got to get started right away. Uh, Coach Alex Frank, Faircast Media, congratulations on getting hired here. Um, I know it's just one game, but having lived in, in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area, what are your thoughts on the Crosstown shootout? Let's get right to it. <laughs> well, I like Skyline a lot, uh, so that's a good piece of it. Uh, I'm excited. It's something I've always, you know, I've always watched the game, you know, regardless of, you know, I've, I've always known the coaches involved, and to get a chance to be a part of that. Uh, we were talking about that last night, actually, my wife and I. And uh, I guess we get to start on the road this year in the Crosstown Shootout, right? right? That's the best way to start your career. So let's, <laughs> let's head on the road, be Cincinnati's team. Uh, it looks like that's it for questions in the news conference. Again, Coach Brand is going to be available for one-on-one -on -one down on the arena floor right after this. We appreciate all of you for being here today. Go Bearcats. Well done, John. Thank you. That's why you're our coach right there. Thank you.